A long time ago, the world was in the middle of a war between humans and monsters. By the end, not a single person remembered why the fighting had started, and thus they agreed to live in peace. Many years later, there are two doctors who specialize in treating monster girls, Dr. Glenn, a human, and his half-snake half-human assistant Safi. They are both very skilled and dedicated to their work, but Dr. Glenn is a bit sus. He's too obsessed with his patient's health, and he doesn't care about their modesty. He will do anything to cure them, even if it means touching them inappropriately or exposing them in public. Safi is not happy with Dr. Glenn's behavior. She has a crush on him, and she gets jealous when he gets close to other monster girls. One day, they receive a letter from Dr. C. Foley. She is a half-human, half-octopus monster girl who is also a famous doctor. She asks them to go to the arena and check on her patients while she is away. Glenn is eager to help his master, but Safi is worried. She knows that the arena is full of cute monster girls who might catch Dr. Glenn's eye. And she is right. One of the patients is Tazalia Scythia, a centaur who is the only daughter of Scythia transportation. Glenn examines Tazalia and finds out that she is actually completely healthy and fine. He tells her to go and moves on to his other patients. But at the end of the day, as they are about to leave, Glenn is stopped by two of Tazalia's attendants, Kay and Lorna. They are worried and they tell him that something must be wrong with Tazalia, because she has been losing every match in the arena for the last month. They say that she is very talented and hard-working, so it doesn't make sense for her to lose so much. Glenn however is confident in his diagnosis and says that Tazalia is okay. But to make sure, he decides to watch one of her matches. The girl loses again, this time to a cat girl, and Glenn finally sees what the problem is. That night, as Tazalia is training for the next match, Glenn and the two attendants confront her and capture her. Safi holds down the centaur princess in a very awkward and indecent way. Glenn puts some iron hooves on Tazalia's feet. She had been too proud of her royal blood and had refused to wear iron hooves, which is why she was losing her balance and her matches. Tazalia is mad at them for stepping in. But the next day, she wins a match in the arena after losing 10 times in a row. We're then taken to a flashback during the war. Safi was taken as a hostage by Glenn's family, so that her family wouldn't betray the humans. During that time, they became close friends, until the war ended and she went back to her home. Many years later, they met again at the same medical school and became friends again. Next, Glenn and Safi go shopping on the Marrow Waterways, a city built by the Dragon Lady Scatty. Safi is happy that they are shopping together because she can seduce Glenn. However, the boy just sees this as a quick trip to get some supplies. As they reach their destination, a mermaid lady calls them a cute couple and invites them to her place. Safi becomes overwhelmed and drags Glenn to the mermaid. The mermaid, Lulala is a singer who sings for lovers and money, especially lovers. Glenn senses something fishy and asks for a song, but he only pays her two copper coins instead of three. He offers her a free checkup as the third coin. As he expected, the girl can't finish the song and starts coughing. It turns out that she has a disease. Glenn examines her and sees blisters in her mouth. He then checks her gills with his bare hands instead of using tools because, why not? Glenn discovers that Lulala spent way too much time out of water, which caused her gills to inflame and her voice to suffer. Lulala tells them that she had to work 12 hours a day because her father left her family and she had no money. Suddenly, a young boy falls into the river and interrupts their conversation. Lulala jumps in to save him, but she is completely exhausted when she gets out. As the doctors perform CPR on the boy, Lulala falls into the water again. But this time, the mermaid starts drowning in the water. Glenn sees this and dives in to save Lulala. He performs mouth on mouth to force air into her lungs, which makes her gills work again. Safi uses her long tail to drag them out of the water, therefore saving both of them. A few days later, Lulala turns out to be completely okay. She found a new job at the city hall in Marrow Waterways, where she sings every day and earns enough money for her family. After all the necessary touching that Glenn had performed, Lulala formed a crush on him. Meanwhile in Marrow Waterways, a woman is on a mission to catch some crooks in the city. She runs after them like a madwoman, but she gets caught in a trap. The next day, Glenn and Safi are busy healing a slime girl who is literally too hot to handle. They get a visit from Lady Scatty and her bodyguard Kunai. Scatty is a dragon-human hybrid and Kunai is a human golem made of spare human parts. So she's basically the Wish.com version of Frankenstein. Since Scatty has a voice like a whisper, Kunai does all the talking for her. She tells them that she lost an arm in a fight last night and she wants them to find it and stitch it back on. Scatty drags her away, but Kunai doesn't want Glenn's help. She has a bad history with doctors who messed her up more than they fixed her. 
She hates doctors with a passion, except for Safi, who she thinks is cool. She tells Glenn to buzz off and says she'll find her arm by herself. She goes back to the streets and sees the same crooks who took her arm. She decides to follow them, however, she falls for their trap again. Glenn is determined to help Kanai, so he goes looking for her arm. He meets Tazalia, who found Kanai's leg. He examines the leg and sees that the stitches are amateurish. He wonders if the people who made Kanai were even doctors or just some random dudes with a sewing kit. He goes deeper into the city and meets Lalala, who has Kanai's arm. She gives him the arm and tells him that he can use the limbs to track down Kanai's location. Meanwhile, Kanai crawls to a wall and curses her luck. She's missing an arm and a leg, but that's not the worst part. She can still hear the voices of all the people whose body parts were used to make her, so she's basically a human radio. Glenn finds her and offers to help her, but she tells him to go away. He ignores her, puts on his glasses and goes full doctor mode. He fixes her arm and leg and connects all the blood vessels properly. He tells her that this might stop the voices in her head, since she'll feel more connected to her body parts. He also makes her feel some other things, if you know what I mean. She thanks him, even though she still hates doctors. The girl thinks Glenn is different from the rest. Back at the clinic, Safi gets a harpy egg from one of her mates. She tries to prank Glenn and tells him that she's pregnant, but he's not fooled since he knows that snakes lay eggs. Safi shows him the abandoned harpy egg, which her friend found on the street. Glenn checks the egg and sees that it's not fertilized, so it's just a big omelet waiting to happen. Outside, some bandits show up and attack the clinic from the front door. The bandits are all human, so Safi beats them up just as easily as she beats Glenn. What do you mean by that? More bandits show up, so the doctors run outside and meet Kunai. She tells them that the bandits are slavers who kidnap harpies and force them to lay eggs, which they sell to the highest bidders on the black market. The doctors ask for help from the city council, but they're all busy with their own mission to stop the slavers. So the two are forced to join Kanai on the mission. Scatty and Lulala join them as well. Out of nowhere, they get attacked by archers, but Tessalia saves them with her horse powers. Kanai and Tessalia fight the bandits outside, while the doctors go inside with Scatty. They find the harpies that were captured by the bandits. They're all okay, except for one harpy who has a stuck egg and is in severe pain. Glenn gets to work and tries to help the harpy deliver the egg safely. Safi fights the bandits and remembers her past. Her own family wanted her to spy on Glenn's family and also kill the family if the deal with the humans went bad. The egg comes out just fine, but Safi gets stabbed by a poison knife. She falls asleep in the middle of the fight. She wakes up soon though because the slavers used weak poison. Glenn tells her that the slavers were caught and the harpy laid her egg safely. Knowing that everything worked out, Safi decides to tell Glenn the truth about her past, but he says he already knew everything. His family did some digging on her when she came to their place. They knew she was there to kill them, but Glenn still wanted to be her friend. Safi is so happy that she uses her tail to tie his arms and legs together, which puts him in a suspicious position. But before she can do anything sus, she falls asleep again. The following day, the two doctors go to the Harpy village to help the locals there. Tessalia pulls their carriage through the mountains when suddenly a rock slide happens. Kay and Lorna save Tessalia from being harmed but Kay gets hurt and can't walk anymore. Some male harpies show up and fly Kay to their village like some real chats. The rest of the group follows them. Glenn finally examines Kay's wound at the village and discovers it's just a mild sprain that needs some rest to heal. But Glenn has no time to relax as he has to help many villagers with various problems at the makeshift clinic. After a long day of work, Glenn steps outside for a breath of fresh air and runs into Lorna, who looks lost. She explains that she came with Tazalia, but her mistress is busy with the harpies, trying to hire them to become the FedEx of the sky. Kay's injury has made Lorna very anxious and she almost messed up Tazalia's deal. Tazalia notices Lorna's anxiety and asks Glenn to check on her. Glenn is puzzled as Lorna has no physical symptoms, but rather a mental issue. Safi suggests that Lorna might have a submissive personality and needs to be restrained to feel calm and secure. Glenn then tries a forbidden and ancient move. He binds and blindfolds Lorna. I think Glenn might have researched the wrong site. To his surprise, Lorna feels much better as she can concentrate on her work. Glenn wonders if Lorna just likes being tied up. <laughs> boy. As a reward, Kay and Lorna offer to please Glenn together. They tell him that their mistress wants to marry him and that they would also belong to him if she did so. They ignore all limits and try to persuade Glenn to finish the deed with them. But Glenn overcomes his demons and firmly rejects them. I see that Glenn still hasn't gotten over Maggie. Kay and Lorna still hope that Glenn will become their master someday. 
the group go to see Illy, the harpy who had been Glenn's patient when they were captured by the bandits. Illy had avoided Glenn's treatment in his makeshift clinic, so he decided to visit her at her home. Illy has lost her ability to fly after the bandit incident, which has shattered her self-esteem. Glenn examines her again and uses his sixth sense to take her temperature and pulse with his bare hands. I wonder what those hands can do. He discovers that Illy isn't sick at all. She was just losing her feathers so that she could grow new ones. Illy is furious with Glenn's diagnosis. She refuses to believe that her flightlessness was caused by some missing feathers. She runs out of the house in a rage. Tessalia follows her and finds out that Illy wanted to be a gladiator like her and fight in the arena. Illy challenges Tessalia to a duel but she is no match for the seasoned fighter. Tessalia grabbed one of Illy's feathers during the fight, which she gives to Glenn. Glenn realizes what the problem is and collects all of Illy's fallen feathers around the town and rushes to find her. Glenn tells Illy that she is molting, but not in a normal way. Illy has phoenix blood in her veins, so she is replacing her old feathers with new ones that have phoenix properties. A few days later, Illy proves Glenn right by flying with her new rainbow wings. Glenn touches one of her feathers and feels its heat. He wonders how much of a phoenix Illy really is. Glenn and Safi also give the harpies some tips on how to care for their wings and claws. When they are about to leave, some harpies come in soaked and covered in a white, creamy, and tasty liquid. It turns out to be spider silk, and it is everywhere in the forest. While exploring, they meet Arania, a spider woman who is a famous dressmaker and Safi's best friend. Arania says she wants to catch Illy and see her rainbow wings, but when she hears that there are many harpies in the village, she is overjoyed and follows Glenn and Safi there. In the village, Arania meets Illy and begs her to let her touch her feathers. She says that she just wants to stroke her feathers. Just one little stroke or perhaps a small squeeze, nothing more. Next day, the girls go to the hot springs because it's good for Safi's health. But at the clinic, Arania sees that Glenn is alone. She seizes the chance and asks him to go for a walk with her. She leads him deep into the forest and traps him in one of her webs. Arania wants to make Glenn her lover so that she can be closer to Safi. Arania starts flirting with Glenn, but Tessalia comes out of nowhere and frees him from the web. Arania says that Tessalia and her are the same because they both want Glenn. Tessalia denies that and says that she loves Glenn sincerely and that unlike her, she isn't a bitch. They are about to fight, but Safi arrives. She scolds her friends and takes Glenn away. Back at the clinic, Safi and Glenn have a drink together. Safi confesses her love to Glenn. She says that he doesn't have to love her back, because she already knows that he can't keep his wood in his pants. But then they hear loud noises outside. They go outside with the rest of the village and see the giant goddess Gigas coming their way. They are clueless about why the goddess is angry and are ready to die by her wrath but Tessalia won't let that happen to her and her friends and leads them to escape the village. Illy, who is the fastest flyer, goes to Glen's town to talk to Lady Scatty. Glen and the others pack their things and plan to leave their town before the goddess gets closer, but they notice that Tessalia is missing. The brave centaur goes off to fight the huge goddess by herself. Tessalia thinks that if she kills a goddess, Glen will have to marry her. Safi and Glen catch up with her and stop her from doing anything stupid, but then the giant reaches them. She sneezes so hard that the whole forest shakes in the wind. She says that her name is Dione and she came to the village because she heard there was a doctor who could cure her. Glenn examines the goddess and discovers that she has a common cold. He gives her some medicine and asks Arania to make some warm clothes for her so that she doesn't have to be so revealing in the cold. Glenn finishes his examination of the goddess and decides to go back home. He reopens his clinic and meets Tessalia for dinner. Unsurprisingly, Tessalia thinks it's a date and tells him how she wanted to die for him. But then Safi shows up and joins them. Can anyone in the comments please tell me what this guy's secret is? The next day, they all go to the Marrow Waterways for the ceremony. Glenn, however, sees something wrong with Scatty's tail. Scatty is giving her speech, but she suddenly faints in front of everyone. Watch this video as well and I'll see you next time.